Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are talking about Demi Lovato. Now, we haven't heard very much from Demi in the last few years following her, like, catastrophic overdose. But we've talked about her sort of recently in her engagement to her homeless ex-boyfriend, Max. Awful nightmare garbage person. But you can check out those videos <laughs> because we, we, we shredded him to hell. But today, we're going to talk about Demi in a different way. Dating in a different sphere. Gay dating or queer dating or something. I don't really know what she's trying to tell us in some recent interviews she's been doing, but she's trying to tell us something. So we're going to break down what's going on with Demi, why she might be reaching these conclusions about her life and her sexuality and like, you know, changing a lot. And we're also going to talk about our own sexuality, how to determine what it is, how to stand in your truth in a positive, confident way in the face of maybe family and friends or society that's like, what? And actually, should you even define yourself? I'm going to tell you my experience being a bisexual woman and why I call myself that instead of other terms. I'm also going to explain the sweatshirt. <laughs> and we're going to break down, like I said, what's going on with Demi because she has a documentary coming out, Dancing with the Devil. But we're going to break down her interview with Glamour Magazine. So stick around. But before we get started, be sure to join me on Flays. It's our uncensored ad-free platform. We're doing some story times over there. I just have a story time up about making friends as an adult and how I managed to move to Montana knowing not one single person in the entire state and crafted an incredible group of ride or die friends in a matter of months, if actually not weeks. I'm going to give you actual concrete steps and things to do to make friends and not feel like a big weirdo or a social outcast. Also, also, if you would like a video from me, a little custom video, head to Cameo where I can answer your questions, do a pep talk, birthday shout out, anything like that. And be sure to follow me on Instagram. You guys suggested this topic and voted on it. I always love it when you weigh in. So Demi talked to Glamour Magazine recently and she debuted a very different look. She's got the shaved head and it's pink. I think she looks fantastic like this. Like I cannot pull off this look to save my life. I had short hair when I went off to college. I look like an absolute boy. Which is fine if that's the look you're going for. It was not for me. We're going to keep it long. Like that is that is how I look my best. So I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous that she can pull this off. I think the pink is cute. But this is not just an arbitrary look. This isn't, I'm just sick of washing my hair all the time. This look seems to be very directly related with her own sort of sexuality revolution. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about some things she's talked about in terms of drugs, because I think that's really important to touch on. We see so many celebs go off to rehab and it's like, I emerged stronger, my journey of, of healing, brave, you know, and they do their little People magazine story, but they don't actually get into the nitty gritty of what drugs can do to your life. I, you know, had my time in the sun with drugs when I was an NYC party girl, I was doing a lot of coke and, you know, I don't do it now. And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like glad I did it, but I'm glad I at least have that firsthand knowledge of what drugs are like, because drugs, they're like, they're like bad eating. You know, people like, oh, like don't do drugs. The dare off, oh, you're going to smoke weed and wake up pregnant. And, and then you smoke weed or you do coke or you try something even harder. And the next day you're like, my life hasn't fallen apart. <laughs> oh my God, everyone was lying to me. Or I'm like the 1% of 1% who can do drugs and like be totally fine. We think that about food too. You can eat pizza for probably like 10 days in a row and you're like, I haven't gained weight. Oh my God, I like, I can eat whatever I want. Then boom, the pants don't fit. You see things in the mirror you don't like and you're like, oh no. By the time you realize that actually you're not the 1% of the 1%, you're the majority of people who can eat what they want, who can't do a million drugs and not get addicted or have it have very serious consequences on their life and health, you got a lot of making up to do, right? It's not so easy to roll that back. So I appreciate Demi being very forthright about the health fallout because I have not been a huge Demi fan because she was lying about her drug use for so fucking long. I hate it when celebrities lie. I hate it because they're telling fans, it's like you're gaslighting your fans. Like the ones who, like when Kylie was lying about fillers, it's like you have you are telling your fans that this is just puberty, that you're just gonna like turn 18 and your lips are gonna be totally different. Your tits are gonna grow four sizes. You're gonna have these impossible proportions. Like that's not true. And then when that doesn't happen to these girls, they're gonna look at themselves like such a failure and like, 
well, why does this happen to other people and not to me? It doesn't happen to other people, honey. So it really made me mad when Demi spent like years lying. I'm sober. I'm this. <laughs> okay. Like we, there's a lot of mutual people that I know who know her. And it's like, no, she wasn't sober. Like she wasn't shooting up, you know, on a, in skid row, but she was not what she was presenting to her fans. It's like JLo saying she only uses olive oil. You're not even Italian. Don't, olive oil is our thing. That's all we have sometimes, okay? We're trying to make people forget we were in the Axis powers during World War II. Give us our, our olive oil. But it's like, J-Lo, it's like if you're gonna, don't even speak on it if you're gonna lie. This is what I hate. Like, don't even talk about your beauty routine, your fitness routine, your sobriety. If it's just gonna be a lie, just avoid the question. Ugh. Anyway. So Demi said that after her overdose, she had three strokes a heart attack, she can't drive anymore, she has blind spots, like if she's looking at your eyes, she can't see your nose and your mouth, and she has tinnitus, which I think is like the ring in the ears, you know, sometimes you get Superman ear and it's like, and you're like, is a far off power trying to tell me something? <laughs> like, but it's like that all the time, can you imagine? So I really appreciate her eventual honesty about this, because you know, we think about people who overdose and it's like, well, they woke up, so they're fine. They're not fine. There's a lot of fallout that we just don't know. So like I said, I appreciate that. But she's also in a lot of therapy. At least I'm judging this based on her like very therapized sound bites. Like, okay, she said this to Glamour. When I ignore and deny myself of my truth, I get angry and I overflow and I make bad choices. If I look in the mirror and present the mirror with something I'm not, it will shatter. Did you copy and paste that from a therapist? That looks like it's on a pamphlet someplace, right? I mean, good for you. And when we first get into therapy, we tend to like regurgitate all this therapy speak and we're starting to read, you know, self-help books and stuff. So like, great. But it's just like, I can see where she's at in this process. But she's gone through a lot of changes. She left behind the house that she OD'd in. She changed her management. I would assume she like axed a whole bunch of friends. She really, really does seem committed to being authentic. And part of that is being a bit more authentic about her sexuality. So she had this to say about her sexuality. This is from Glamour. Lovato is queer, really queer, she says, and enjoying fully, fully exploring that side of herself. I know who I am and what I am, but I'm just waiting until a specific timeline to come out to the world as what I am. I don't know what that means. I, that's, I don't know what that means. I'm following my healers as timeline and I'm using this time to really study and educate myself on my journey and what I'm preparing to do. I have no idea what she's saying, honestly. Can anyone translate that? She's trying to say she's like gay and she doesn't know how to come out. Is this like a pre coming out? Is this like an amuse bouche, an appetizer? I really don't get it. But she talked a lot about her sexuality and how she's like, you know, even when I was with guys, I'd be like, I don't want to put my mouth there. And it had nothing to do with the person. I was just like not into some of the sexual aspects of being with a dude. I was like, I like the romantic part, but sexually, eh. She's like, I recently hooked up with a girl and was like, oh, I like this much better. I totally get that. I'm bisexual. I don't talk about it a lot because I don't define myself by this. This is sort of my summation of what this video is going to be about. How do you define your sexuality? You don't, you don't. We are living in an age that loves a label. We love a label. And it's funny that like the younger generation, you know, younger millennials and, and Gen Z, it's like, we don't like labels. That's why I'm going to tell you, which you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you that I am gender fluid, gender queer, non-binary, sexually fluid, blah, 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 blah. Label label after label after label after label and people my age are looking it's like yeah you just you seem to really hate labels it's literally all I've heard from you is labels designed not to label you okay one of my friends she's uh she's older she's like in her 50s but and she has a daughter who just went off to college and her daughter's like I'm sexually fluid and I'm, I'm queer and all this and she was like honey you're not doing anything different or special that we weren't doing in the 70s. You're not special. And her daughter was like, oh, and I was like, oh my God, Grace, like, 
That's, I love it. It's like, ain't nothing new under the sun, okay? Everyone was putting their mouth on everything in the 70s and in the 60s and in the 1890s. Like, we think when we're young, everybody got to know. Everybody's got to know. I've talked before about girls, like celebrities, using celebrities as examples, who are in their I have a vagina phase. The most notable example of this is Miley Cyrus. Her I have a vagina phase, it's, I mean, it seemed to last forever. It was like fucking dog years, right? She was twerking and like the vag and the costume. It was just endless. And it happens around like 19, 20, 20. It's like when you go off to college and you're like, do you know what I have? Wah! Bella Thorne has had an extremely protracted and long vagina phase. We've all seen like random slips. Ariel Winter went through it. Like we, we see it and you're like, oh yeah, okay. But we go through it ourselves. I had one too. When I was a sophomore in college, I'm like, I'm exploring my sexuality. And I ran around defining myself, talking about it, bisexual this, bisexual that, blah, 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 blah. And part of that, I mean, in many ways, doing that is healthy for us. That's We're growing, we're exploring. We need to like learn more about ourselves. But what I did that was very self-destructive was put labels on myself. Because you know who was asking about my sexuality? Nobody. Literally nobody. I would tell people, I would force this information on people and they're like, okay, I, I just asked if you wanted another Diet Coke, but sure, that's all right. The reason I don't talk about being bisexual, I don't, I have made a whole video on why I don't consider myself queer. I don't like that term. I don't, I don't even understand what it means, honestly. Like I, I, did, I thought it meant gay, but I guess it doesn't. It means just like not straight. I truly don't know. And I also just don't like the word queer. I think it like, it, it hits in my nose. It's here. I just, it's not for me. Great. I'm fine with the term bisexual. That sums me up just fine. I don't feel the need to quantify percentages. Am I 50% gay? Am I 50% straight? I don't know, man. Day to day, it changes. I see a hot chick. I'm like, she's beautiful. But then I see a hot dude. I'm like, oh, he's hot. I'm not sitting here like recording the percentages of my sexuality so that I can have a rock solid definition to tell people. You know why? No one actually cares. The world at large doesn't care about your genitals. They don't, they don't care if you turn them inside out and get a whole new set. They don't care where you put them. They don't care what genitals go in your mouth. We, they don't care. Nobody cares. Why do we need to define ourselves so specifically? When I think of what makes me special, what defines me as a person, my vagina and where I put it is like, it's literally not even on the list. I'm a daughter. I'm a best friend. I'm a YouTuber. I'm an author. I'm an American. I'm a polydactyl. I could, is that polyglot? I'm a polyglot. I can speak a lot of languages. I'm left-handed. My left-handedness defines me more than who I sleep with. Like, and look, I do this for a living. I talk about dating for a living. So you would think, oh, I'm super defined by who I hook up with. No, I'm not. I don't think it makes me special. It's not a character trait. It's just like, I don't know. It's, yeah, kind of going where the wind takes me, going where my pelvis leads me. Maybe one day I'll be with a girl. Maybe one day I'll be with a guy. I'm not boxing myself in with the label that ironically people say is not designed to box you in. And we know people like this, right? And we, it's tempting to be this way. Why is it so tempting to label ourselves? Because we want a tribe, especially when we're young. In adolescence, social inclusion needs peak, right? That's when, we, that's when people are the most dishonest. That's when they're the most physically dangerous. Teenagers are the most dangerous group in terms of crime in, in society. Isn't that strange? Old people are the least dangerous because obviously, you know, just push them over, break a hip, thwarted that bank robbery. But teenagers are more prone to crime because they're peer pressured into it. They join gangs. They want the social inclusion. They want a tribe. They want to feel like they belong, like they have a place in society and they're socially protected. So we are in some, in some ways, like pre not predetermined, predisposed to these labels that give us some sort of definition. A high school in my hometown has coming out day. And I'm like, this is the worst thing we can encourage kids to do. 
not because people shouldn't embrace their sexuality, but because it actually boxes them in. And I remember talking to my friend's son. She's like older and her son was there. And he came out on coming out day and he's like, it was the worst thing I could do. Because then I wasn't, I was the gay kid and girls wouldn't talk to me. And actually, I was only sort of like curious about guys. And I hooked up with one. I was like, ah, I think I like chicks better. But there was kind of like no going back. That label really stuck. And I don't know why I did that to myself. And but some people who came out, they're like, I am super gay and that's great. Great. Good for you. But he's like, I just feel like now I can't sort of redefine myself. I have to live this label until I go off to college and I can't go to college where I know anybody. And it's like, I can't go. I just, I have to like completely leave behind what I knew. And I'm like, that broke my heart. Cause I'm like, Ugh. there's nothing worse than getting boxed in by a label. Whether it's a label someone else puts on you, you're stupid, you're a slut, you're, you're lazy, whatever. But it's worse when we self-label, right? Because we can look at the people labeling us and be like, you're simply wrong. I'm not a slut. I'm not stupid. I'm not worthless. It's difficult. But when we do it to ourselves, we're like, ugh, fuck. I kind of liken it to tattoos. We all know people who got like a lot of tattoos, like a sleeve, right? And everyone I know who has all those tattoos, there's like a lot of chicks with a lot of tattoos in Montana, like, whole slavey things okay so many thigh tattoos like a huge tree on your thigh like trees are everywhere I don't know that you need to get one on your thigh you could simply look out the window and you're gonna see one you'll see one but she's like I just didn't want to be boxed into anything like I just don't want to like you can't box me into a look or to in your corporate society I'm like well no I can't box you and you box yourself in girl are you gonna like hello kitty forever because that's what's all up and down your arm are you going to love that rockabilly vibe until you're 85? You fucking better because there is no changing it up. If you want to move to Martha's Vineyard and be super preppy and wear vineyard vines, too bad. If you want to like marry a politician and wear a backless dress, but you've got like all the South Park characters. I literally know someone with those tattoos. All the South Park characters across her back. Tiny little Asian girl. We're like, this is not what I expected. Crazy. You think that that's, oh, I just can't be labeled. I can't be held back. You're holding yourself back by entrenching into a very specific niche. I love inhabiting different personas. I have had so many different versions of myself. Super preppy in New York. Super emo in New York and like punky. Country now that I'm in Montana, right? And so I know that about myself. I wear a whole bunch of different kinds of fashion. I listen to a whole bunch of different kinds of music, different foods. I travel different places. And I, I realized when I started looking at my life like that and realizing I am very multidimensional and I love the freedom of that multidimensionality, then the desire to define my sexuality kind of, kind of faded away. It wasn't important to me because again, there are so many things that make me special and who I sleep with isn't it. But what if you do feel the need to like, hey, people think I'm straight. I'm actually not. Okay. Let's take a page from Ashley Benson. Super low pro about her sexuality. But yet, she has she dated Cara Delevingne for what, like two years? And then she dated G-Eazy for a year. And how many declarations did she make about her sexuality? None that I know of. I mean, maybe she has spoken about it, but I haven't heard about it, which means it's probably a little bit more low pro. Like she'll address it if someone asks, but she's not leading with it. She's not making herself like, I'm here, I'm queer, I'm not going anywhere. Like she's just living her life, loving who she loves, dating who she dates. And because of that, she seems so much more fluid and open than someone like Demi who is making statement after statement after statement. I have a vagina. I'm shaving my head. Like, great. If that's authentic to her, that's great. But she's also a celebrity. And celebrities have a bit more elasticity in some areas than the rest of us do. You know, if we live in a small town and we declare that we're queer and whatever, that's going to stick. And so it might be hard to meet and date guys after. Or if you do date a guy, people are going to have a lot of opinions about it. This is the same reason I tell you guys, don't tell dudes that you've dated how many people you slept with. It's no one's fucking business. It's literally nobody's business. And when we offer up very intimate details of our intimate sexual life, people, this is human nature, they tend to look at it like, like they're grading a paper. Like, hmm, well, see, I like that. Mm, I don't like that. 
our stories and our histories, they belong to us. They belong to me, right? So I don't lead with this. It's a part of me, but so is my social security number. I'm not going to tell you that either. It's not relevant. And if you think it is relevant, and if you think you have the right to that information, well, we got a problem because you don't. We have probably all encountered people who are like, well, how far did you go with him? What'd you guys do? Like, did you suck his dick? And you're like, I don't, God, like just back the fuck off, okay? But when we lead with our sexuality, we invite questions like that. Because if we define ourselves by our sexuality, we have to be real with ourselves that we're not so different from those Russian sugar babies on OnlyFans, right? Selling pics of their parts and that's all they are. Sex, pussy, who, who fucks them, who wants to fuck them? What's the difference? It's the opposite end of the same spectrum, right? So when I realized that, my perception of sexuality really started to change and it became something very much on the back burner. My advice, don't talk about it and make declarations until there's someone you're actually dating that you're in love with. Don't talk about it with your parents. It's literally none of their business. It isn't. I'm sorry. Just because they raised you and birthed you and even if they live with you, they don't have the right to know what you do with your vagina or your penis. If until you're like, hey, I'm in a real relationship. This is more than just a passing fancy. It's not something I'm saying for attention. This is the man I love. This is the woman I love. Keep it to yourself. Let give yourself the gift of freedom without any sort of social scrutiny, right? Why put yourself under a microscope for people to share their opinions? You don't need someone else's opinion on who you choose to love or sleep with. It's nobody's business but your own. And that's why I don't ever say queer, this and that. It's like if someone asks, like, yeah, I've hooked up with girls. I'm sure I will again in the future. But until then, like, I don't. I don't want that sort of spotlight on me. Put a spotlight on me for my achievements. Put a spotlight on me for my mind and my heart and my empathy. Not for what's going on down here. Oh, and the sweatshirt, it says, you betcha. It was like a whole sweatsuit set. I, <laughs> I, I just love rainbows. And I was wearing it at the airport and I was like, like making eye contact with this guy. This was like two years ago. And, and then he looked at my shirt and I could see him being like, hmm. And I realized the shirt basically looks like it means you betcha I'm gay. <laughs> And I was like, okay. So now it's my wear around the house shirt because again, I'm not defining myself. I want to make eye contact with a girl, with a guy. I want that freedom. So I really urge you to reconsider making huge declarations, as tempting as it can be, especially in this day and age where like we get a lot of social clout by putting ourselves in a category. I'm sexually fluid. And now if, if you say anything about me, that's bad. You're a homophobic, you're queerphobic. It's like, actually, maybe people just don't like you. You know, it seems like a very easy thing to hide behind, but that's not what we do here. We don't hide behind labels. We don't hide behind men in relationships. We don't hide behind anything. We live out loud and we stand proud. Truly, to me, pride has nothing to do with my genitals. It has to do with who I am as a whole 360 person. So remember that before you stress about defining yourself and putting a label. Life is long. Feelings change. Give yourself the space to move in that silence in a societal vacuum in a way without the pressure of someone being like, I thought you were gay. <laughs> I thought you would this. It's like, don't offer it up for criticism. Do what works for you in the quiet stillness of your own life. I want to know what you guys have to say about Demi. Do, seems pretty clear she's going to be dating a girl next. Who should we set her up with? She's the same haircut as Halsey. So I'm like kind of into that if we're just matching people based on hair uh, or like um, pink. I'm so surprised pink's still with a dude, right? But good for her. I want to know who we should set her up with. Uh, we're going to be doing more videos on Demi once her documentary comes out. And like I said, head over to Filets if you want some tips on how to make friends. I'll see you later, Shalligators. Bye.